from the epistle of Saint Peter. Secret servi dei, as servants of God. And we can combine with it the words from the Mass of Saint Michael, Holy Archangel, Holy Archangel Michael, defend us in battle, that we perish not in the dreadful judgment. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. My dear brethren, this title, Secret Servi Dei, as the servants of God, let us pray that from these words and from this day forward, we will see ourselves truly to be servants of God. That's the first, the first thing we should want to be, and that will be our judgment. The angels are the first servants of God. At their head is St. Michael. Let us draw close to them and learn from them how to become true servants of God. The honour of a servant of God, the priority and conviction of a servant of God, the judgment of a servant of God. The honour of a servant of God. The holy angels are so fond of the service of God and they hold it a great favour to be employed in anything that the will of God sets out for them. And they borrow their name from the humblest service, services, the most respectful obedience that they render to the divine majesty. They have in themselves such fine qualities, such advantageous perfections and prerogatives, but they do not make much of these. And this is important. They do not care to be called powerful, knowledgeable, subtle in their speed. They are separated intelligences. They are lights of the spiritual world. They are the stars of the highest heaven. Yet they have no interest in these qualities and perfections in themselves. And St. John Chrysostom says, Their greatest glory and honour is to be called angels of God. That is to say, servants of God, his messengers. And the psalmist, when wanting to address himself to the angelic spirits, he finds no more glorious title to attribute to them than to call them servants of God. Bless the Lord, all ye his angels, you that are mighty in strength and execute his word, hearkening to the voice of his orders. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you servants of his that do his will, you ministers of him that do his will, Psalm 102. Because indeed it is the greatest honour to the angels, however noble, however excellent and elevated they may be, their greatest honour is to be a servant of the Creator. In this, the angels teach us by example that for eternity it is not our personal qualities, it is not our possessions or anything else that counts. What counts for eternal salvation is serving God and doing his will. That's all. Saint Archangel Raphael, glorious, one of the seven spirits that stands at the throne of God. Now that's really something because we know there are millions upon millions upon millions of them. And here's this one who's right at the top, right close to the Blessed Trinity. One of the seven spirits before the throne of the Blessed Trinity. But he, but he, not from the honour that he has, does he take his name. He takes his name from the services he rendered to a little boy, Tobias, and to his old father, blind as he was, by taking away the blindness from his eyes. And so he took the name Raphael, the medicine of God. And yet he stands where he is, but he finds the name for us to know him as medicine of God. O oh, great angel Raphael, give us a constant focus on being servants of God. Give us the medicine we need to be joyful in our obedience to God's will. And St. Michael, the head of this celestial assembly, he is the first, so to speak, the prince of this republic of millions upon millions of angelic spirits. He is the captain of that army host divided into three orders and nine choirs. Apocalypse 12, 7. And there was a great battle in heaven. 
Michael and his angels, it says. So they're his angels. And there was a great battle in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought. Michael and his angels. They are each choir or hierarchy. And in each order of these angelic troops, as many individuals, as many species. What's it mean? These many species. You know, we think, what's a species? I do animal species. You can have, you know, like a camel. You can have a horse, I suppose. You can cow, uh, butterfly, um, a rat, a mouse. Uh, all different species. Each one's different. All the angels, each angel is a different species, one from another. There's not two of them. There aren't, if they were, you know, we take cow. We've got lots of cows. Well, no, one. There's only one. One spirit that has that species now, millions upon millions upon millions of them. Well, what are we talking about? And one is more perfect than the other in certain, certain different qualities. And St. Michael contains the perfections of all. He has in himself all the properties of the angels. And here we come with the hierarchy, the idea of this thing of hierarchy. What does it mean? You know, like hierarchy, we can do it with numbers. Seven, well, seven contains six, contains five, four, three, two, one, right? So... The top one contains all the rest plus. That's the hierarchy. He's head of the hierarchy of all these angels. So millions upon millions upon millions. He has got all of those plus. He's St. Michael. We do it with a bishop. A bishop contains a priesthood, contains a diaconate, contains a subdiaconate, contains the acolytes, the exorcist, the porter, uh, reader, lector. Contains a lot. And the bishop. It's the same idea of hierarchy with St. Michael. He has the properties of all the angels, of the archangels, of the virtues, of the dominations, of the powers, of the principalities, of the thrones, of the cherubim, and of the seraphim, and of the innumerable number of species which fill the various orders and companies of these angels, all of whom have it as their greatest honor to be the heavenly servants of God. the priority and the focus of the servant of God. Now, we call him St. Michael, but we don't actually know anything about him really, except in his actions. Whereas we say a word, if we say, for example, dog, we understand dog completely. We know what it's going to be. It's going to have kind of like a cold nose, two eyes, a long tongue, um, kind of hairy or fluffy tail and bark. And we say dog, and we, with that little contraction, we know exactly what we're talking about. When we say Michael, we don't know what we're talking about. We only know the spirit who stands at the throne of God. We only know him from his actions. We know about him only from his actions, and this is very important. His name comes from what? From his service. His service was the holiest, the most virtuous, the most generous. His service was the most heroic and meritorious ever practiced in heaven. His service came from his nature, which is beyond us. But the action of his nature tells us something about him. And now we turn to the moment when, in Genesis, it tells us, and God said, let there be light. That's when the angels were created. Let there be light. And of an instant, and we're going to stretch the instant out, but of an instant, you have this, these hierarchies, you have these different orders of angels, millions upon millions upon millions, all created at the same instant. And here's Michael. And there's at least one above him, and there could be more, who knows. But the moment that they're created, what do the angels do? Well, it's kind of like a, a stunned moment. And I think the one who was above him, Lucifer, probably felt quite good about himself. <coughs> and would have admired himself. Michael, wherever he was, in this hierarchy, the most heroic and meritorious act ever practiced in heaven, at the instant that St. Michael was created, his action was to give to God the first use of his being, the first thought of his mind, the first effort of his will, the first affection of his heart, and the first outpouring of his love. At the first moment of his creation, 
He turned to God, not to himself. He turned to God. He adored God most perfectly. He paid homage to God's perfections. He thanked God for the benefits that he had received with marvelous gratitude. He loved God with a very ardent love. He offered his being and all that depended on it. He was submerged and annihilated with a very deep submission. His priority and his focus was God, God first. What happened next? His adoration becomes like a plunge. St. Michael, without ever having offended God, strips himself of his heart and affections for the love of God who made him. Not only all the ornaments, but he strips himself of all that he has, of all that he is. He lowered himself and prostrated himself before God. He plunges himself into the abyss of nothingness. So important. He was in a state of most eminent grace. If he had the grace that St. Thomas says is given to the nobility of whichever, however more noble, get more graces. And he had all that nobility. Oceans and abysses of grace were in him. And yet he received a treasure, an ocean, abyss of grace. Yet this, uh, yet thus adorned, he gave himself to God. He adored, loved, and thanked God according to all the graces that was in him with all the reach of his mind, with all the activity of his heart, with all the exertion of his will, with all the strength and vigor of his soul, he thus utterly submitted himself to God, even though he was the prince of an infinity of angels. St. Michael was the first who adored God. That's what he did. He was the first who adored God. And he led angels in this adoration. He was the first who adored God. He was the first who gave himself to God. He was the first creature of heaven and earth who fought for the cause of the Creator. And this, in this, he gives us the example of placing God first before every possible consideration. If you are to be a servant of God, place God first before every possible consideration. What's the conviction? St. Michael knew, knew he was nothing. That he had nothing in himself. This deep conviction gave St. Michael the beautiful name he bears because Michael means who as God. Quis ut Deus. Because Lucifer, speaking of equaling himself to God, St. Michael generously opposed Lucifer. And he went to cry all over heaven among the angelic hosts, Quis ut Deus, and who like God? And who are you, Lucifer? And who am I? And who are we all? And what can we ever be to be compared with God? This cry gave to God the greatest praise that can be given him, the most illustrious praise of honor that can be attributed to the Creator. For to say, quis ut Deus, who, like God, is to praise, in a word, all God's perfections, and that is to praise them to an infinite degree in brilliance and eminence. Who is great like God? Who is wise like God? Who is good like God, who is just like God, who is merciful like God, who is holy like God, who infinite, incomprehensible, admirable, who adorable like God, who lovable, praiseworthy and formidable like God. To say who is like God is to say that God is singularly unique and incomparable in all these perfections, that God alone is endowed with all these perfections. God alone, God alone. All that has been, all that is, all that will ever be, and all that could ever be, is nothing. Since there is no creature, and there can be none, that can be compared to the Creator. 
Psalmist, all the parts of my body, all the powers of my soul will cry out with truth, Lord, who is like to thee? Who can be compared to thee? Says the psalmist. Psalm 34, 10. Osamea, omnia osamea, all my bones shall say, Lord, who is like to thee? Of which St. Augustine, when he read that, says, what comment do you need? Can anything be said more beautiful than these words? They do not need to be explained. They need to be uttered often. Lord, who is like to thee? Utter it often. Lord, who is like to thee? That is to be our deep conviction. And that's what we need to be like if we are truly to be servants of God. The judgment of the servant. St. Michael is often seen holding scales in his hands. In the scales of his judgment, he puts on one side the majesty of God, and on the other scale he puts himself and all creation. O oh, great saint, O oh, great saint Michael, how much do you weigh in your own judgment? How much do the millions and millions of angels, so powerful, so learned, so subtle and so agile, weigh? Compared to God, they do not weigh the weight of a feather, not a speck, not a speck of dust, not an atom, nothing at all. As the prophet Isaiah says, and this is true, or it's false, but it's true, ecce gentes, behold the, gentles, the, the Gentiles are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the smallest grain of a balance. Behold, the islands are as a little dust, Isaiah 40, 15. And he immediately corrects himself, and he adds, All the nations are before him as if they had no being at all, and are counted to him as nothing and vanity. What does it mean? It means... It means... All, all of creation, all the angels, all men, all women, by themselves, are nothing. And when they look at themselves and take themselves alone, they are less than a speck of dust in comparison to God. And so saying, when we die, as the scripture says, as the Holy Mass teaches, we're going to be placed in these scales. And we better be found to be servants of God. Because we only have any value. We only have any weight in as much as we are united in that relationship with God. Human being, no matter what he is, no matter how great he is, no matter what his talent, no matter how, what his finances, no matter how good his family is, if they are all void of God, well, they're judged. Thekel, says the Holy Scripture. Prophet Daniel, Thekel, thou art weighed in the balance and art found wanting. Put them in, if Michael Archangel just tips the scale, they go down. In the name of the angels is the presence of God. Mikael, who like God. Raphael, medicine of God. Gabriel, strength of God. Uriel, fire of God. You must have God in your name. Without God in your name, nothing. You're valueless. Because you've lived, even if you've been successful, on natural, if you've been a nice neighbor for yourself, it's natural virtue. Natural virtue has nothing to do with God. It has to do with me and my little life. And uh, if you say... Come to God, and on that day you put in that scale. I made a good house, I brought up six children, I gave them a good start in life, they married fine persons. If there is only that, you see that the name of God is not there. The love of God is not there. They are godless successes. The prophet Daniel gave the sentence, Thekel, thou art weighed in the balance, and art found wanting. Worldly successes do not weigh a wisp, 
from the judgment of God. But if you say, I made a house because it was my vocation and I did this for the glory of God. I brought up six children to populate heaven. I gave them a good start in life and it cost me, but I did it for the love of God. They married fine persons, thanks be to God, and their good education. I have often thought of God. I have adored and loved God with all my heart. I have prayed to God much and devoutly. I have instructed my children in the love and fear of God. I was very respectful and obedient to my father and mother, patient and good-natured towards my neighbors for the love of God. I visited and assisted the poor for the love of God. God is in these actions. They are weighed in the scales of St. Michael. The more there is of God in the action, and the less there is of myself in my little world, the more it is meritorious and weighty in that balance. We must be servants of God. We must take that as our focus in life. Monk or priest, father or mother, youth, child, we want to be what we're baptized to be, which is to be the servants of God. And our, 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 the first servants are the angels, and they give us an extraordinary example of how to put God first and make God the focus. They did it in an instant. We do it through time. Thanks be to God. Because I tell you what, we are so messed up in ourselves. It takes usually a bit of time to be able to get to that focus where now I'm trying with all my heart to be only a servant of God. Let us therefore give ourselves to St. Michael so that we, he may imprint on our hearts the truths contained in his name. Let's Put St. Michael among our patron saints. Let us have devotion to him all our lives. Let us invoke him in our temptations and pray to him to destroy in us pride, vanity, and self-esteem and the other works of the infernal serpent. Pray to him to obtain for us the grace not only to prefer God the Creator to all creatures, but to esteem and love none, only for the God and only in God and for God. So that having fought under his banner on earth, we may be crowned with him in heaven. Sweet Mother, Queen of the Angels, you gave us the title when you spoke to Saint Gabriel and said to him, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Behold the servant of the Lord. O Mediatrix of all graces, may we in the end of our lives, when we come to that judgment, be found truly to be the servants of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.